Hello, and welcome to the series Mastering the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the NCOSI System Engineering Professional Exam. This is video number 17 um, in chapter 5.2, Project Assessment and Control Processes. My name is Lance Sherry, and I'll be your guide for this video. Um, so as we have said in the past, uh, to kind of introduce the topic, um, system engineers are responsible for building complex systems. Those are systems which have a lot of components and a high degree of interaction between the components. These systems are developed in complex life cycles and then deployed and operated in complex life cycles. And together, the complex systems and complex life cycles need a uh, coordinated systematic way of developing the systems and operating them, and those processes and activities are captured in the NCOSI System Engineering Handbook. The process is so complex that there are 59 system engineering life cycle process and activities, and those 59 activities are organized into seven groups. The topic of this video falls under the technical management processes and is related to the project assessment and control process. Um, as we mentioned in the previous video, the uh, system engineers organize ourselves to build, create, upgrade, and retrofit systems by uh, calling them projects. So the project is our unit of measurement, a unit of control. The technical management processes are used to establish and evolve plans for these projects, assess achievement and actual progress against the plans for the project, and manage and control execution. So within the technical management processes, there are eight processes that are shown on the right-hand side. Um, so one of the things we touched base on in the previous video was the fact that there's shared space between the project manager and the system engineer. So without knowing the requirements for the system and the complexity of the system, it's not possible to plan a project. And likewise, it's not possible to run a project or plan a project and then run it without an understanding of the system engineering. So system engineers make the best project managers and project managers make the best system engineers. So the objectives for this video is to understand the purpose of the project assessment and control process, understand the outputs, inputs, and process activities, and then the handbook introduces two terms, that of earned value and agile project management. The definition of the project assessment and control process is the purpose of this process is to assess if the plans are aligned and feasible, and again, those plans were developed in the previous process. Um, determine the status of the project technical and process performance, so to see how things are coming along, how, how, how progress is taking place. And then direct execution to ensure performance is according to the plans and the schedule. And that is to uh, coordinate activities and make people aware of uh, start and stop dates and coordination uh, between groups uh, in order to execute the plan. So, in plain language, um, the project assessment and control process is responsible for keeping track of project process, project progress, and then fix things that are not going according to the plan. So, track things and then address um, the variance to the plan. The inputs to the process are the work breakdown structure, the schedule, and the budget. Um, and then using that information, you're going to assess the project against the plan and then generate uh, project performance measurements as shown on the right with the earned value chart. And when things are not going according to plan, well, you've got to take uh, corrective actions. So um, as a quick reminder about the, um, the, ro the uh, role of uh, project assessment and control, we had previously used this diagram that shows how you take, starting on the left-hand side, how you take requirements, preliminary requirements, use that to create a work breakdown structure. Uh, based on the work breakdown structure, you can create a schedule, 
and a, a budget, and then together with the schedule and the budget, you are able to assess the actual progress of the plan uh, using some techniques called earned value. So the, um, the project assessment and control process uh, uses this concept of, of earned value. And as you can see on this chart, um, the uh, vertical axis is the dollars spent or the effort spent on the project. And the horizontal axis is the, is the time of the project. Um, on the lower right-hand side of the, of the diagram is the planned end date. So if you follow the, the blue line, the solid blue line, um, we incrementally spend dollars as time goes on. And then as we get closer to the end date, things are coming together. And that's when we expect uh, to end. So what we do today is we collect our current status. And as you can see in the current status, we have a red line, which is the actual dollar spent. And as you can see, that is significantly higher than, than the blue line, resulting in the cost variance. So we say cost variance is the earned value uh, minus the actual cost. Likewise, the green line shows the uh, earned value, and that is um, below the blue line, and that shows the scheduled variance, which is the earned value minus the planned value. So you can see, looking at this chart, that um, we are behind schedule. Uh, the green line is below the blue, and we are above cost. The red line is above the blue line. So using those two uh, projections, we can project when we will complete the project in terms of cost and when we'll complete the project in terms of time. And those are shown on the right-hand side uh, with the project overrun as well as the, as the budget overrun. Um, so one of the uh, ways of reporting this in a concise manner is the cost performance index. And I'm looking at the bullets on the left-hand side now. Uh, the second bullet from the bottom is the cost performance index, uh, known as the CPI. And that is the earned value divided by the actual cost. Um, so you're over budget if it's less than one, and you're under, under budget if it's greater than one. That ratio is greater than one. Likewise, the schedule performance index, the SPI, is earned value divided by planned value. And that is we're ahead of schedule if that ratio is greater than one, and behind schedule if that ratio is less than one. So obviously this is a complex uh, topic, and uh, we have kind of summarized it very briefly. Uh, but these are the main points about how to use earned value uh, to assess and control project performance. Another topic that's brought up in this chapter is um, the idea that what gets measured gets done. So that's a well-known aphorism. Um, what we measure, we take, uh, uh, we pay attention to, and that's what gets completed. And then another thing that's mentioned in this uh, chapter is the agile project management technique. So agile project management is a technique that intends to um, take advantage of the fact that we learn things as we go along. And instead of uh, uh, learning things and then not using them in the project, you want to incorporate them right away. So some of the principles of agile project management is to have small incremental builds. So we uh, build something and then test something, and then take the information that we've learned and then uh, build the next uh, version and incrementally keep adding functionality uh, in small builds. Um, so that gets to the second bullet, that we're, uh, the emphasis on tighter feedback cycle, cycles. So rather than just following the plan, uh, we want to um, build and test and then use that information and uh, communicate with, with a greater frequency and greater bandwidth. So in order to do that, Agile Project Management has these regular team meetings. Uh, there's stand -up, daily stand-ups uh, called the Scrum. Uh, where you do a plan, do review, and then also instead of uh, focusing on what was accomplished, uh, the APM uh, 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 way of doing things um, keeps track of the backlog, and that uh, establishes what work is left to do, 
and then very importantly prioritizes that work. So you're constantly uh, checking uh, the status and then um, adjusting priority in order to get things done. So that's uh, also a very interesting uh, topic, agile project management, and that's a, a very simple uh, overview of the topic. So with that, we've reached the uh, end of the video. Here's an opportunity to see what you know quiz. Um, so you can pause the video, write down the answers to the quiz. And when you're, dead, when you're done, you can go to the uh, unpause it and run it again. And that will give you uh, the answers to the quiz. Uh, you can uh, test yourself. Hope you did well. That brings us to the end of this uh, video. Um, this is the uh, project assessment and control process. And the next video is going to be the decision management process.